like nine o'clock and the sun may be shining and you may decide not to carry an umbrella do you know that if you are not careful rain can beat you and you will come back home soaked i'm not talking about the rain you know there's some rain if it's rain it's you just really spoil it you will still wait in the bus to look for kada there are some kind of rain that will fall when you are driving on the road you will not meet anybody the only person you will meet on the road doing such kind of rain is the person that the rain has beaten and he has what your Bible will say, Kamu. He has taken away this rain has beaten. There's no need running again. That's the only person you just be saying going in the rain. But I'm going somewhere this morning. I'm praying for that person that will say you know, I've told us in this church. Amen means I agree with God. If you refuse to say amen, you agree with your situation. When you say amen, you say, mm-hmm. For me, I am on the Lord. The showers of rain that will drain us totally. The showers of blessing. You know, those who have faith, they are the ones that started saying amen. They are not waiting for the end of the prophecy. They know if God says it, they will do it. It will happen to the loudest amen in the name of Jesus. Our heavenly home. And let's start with the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. Oh, I want to see you look up on the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. For he looks for a city which has foundations. There is an S. Whose builder and maker is God. Last month our theme was shouts of joy. This month by the special grace of God we will be reminding ourselves of our heavenly home. It is a place we are going to. And I want to believe you are going with us. Our heavenly home. First, let me ask this question. What is a home? Do you know that a home is not a house? A house is not a home. This place you are seated now is a house. It's not your home. It's a house. In fact, the good news is, (laughs) this is the house of God. The Bible said, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is one of the reasons why I really am sad for those that don't come to the presence of God. Because what they are losing is, the Bible said, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let me quickly pray this prayer for you since you are in church. What will make your life pleasurable as you come into the presence of God this morning is releasing it to you in Jesus' name. A house is not a home. I have a friend and a colleague. He has dual citizenship. He's a Pakistani and he's also a British citizen. And of course, sometimes you read in the news, Islamabad, there are bombings in Pakistan and the like. So one day I asked him, I said, there are bombings in Pakistan, where will you go home? I thought that maybe because he's a British, he's also a British citizen, he will say, I want to go to Britain. I was surprised. He told me, he said, ah, it's not that bad. I can go to Pakistan. In fact, Pakistan is home. Now, to him, he can call Pakistani home because that is where his roots are. That is where he belongs. Now, 
there is a, a announcement which I must quickly tell you and let me see those who are fit there is a free bus ride to Madugiri tomorrow if you are going shout at me <laughs> people don't have people have lost their feet amen none of you want to go to Madugiri now that was actually a joke the truth of the matter is I also have a friend that comes from Madugiri last month I asked him and we're talking and he just mentioned in person he said ah, I just went to I said where did you go to he said I went to Madugiri of course is it not where they are bombing? He said, but that is my home. This is where I come from. Even though I live in Lagos. But if I'm to call, tell somebody where I came from, I will say I am from Lagos. I even went for that. I said, who did you go? I said, ah, my mother stays there. Ah. You didn't evacuate your mother to come to Lagos. You say, why? All her life, that is where she grew up. Now, this is the one that will shock some of us. He said she has two daughters. He said, the last time I visited mom, I visited with my wife and my two daughters. Because why? Medukiri to him is home. He has a house in Lagos. Lucky like precisely. But he is from his hometown is what? Medukiri. So when we talk about heavenly home, what are we saying? It is the home we belong to. A house is not a home. Do you know that if somebody dies, and I'm praying for somebody, and I hope you know, the covenant of God for your life is a covenant of life. How do I know this? Jesus says, I will not die. But I will live. To declare the goodness of God. It means as long as you are declaring the goodness of God, you are not permitted to die. Because God knows that the candidate of those that will praise him will reduce if you die. That's if you are praising God. That's why the psalmist said, the dead cannot praise you. The psalmist was so sure of himself. He was challenging God. He said, God, if you came in now, one of those people that will be singing your praises, you have lost one of them. I know God is a statistician. He doesn't want to lose anybody. That's just a digression. I just want to teach us. The secret of living long is just to praise God. Because as long as you are praising God, God says no. This is the candidate that will not die. I'm praying for someone. By the special grace of God. Even though your testimonies were there. Because the Bible said in the book of Romans. He said, God is able to give life to those things that are dead. That even if you call this thing dead, God is sufficiently powerful to give life to it. Even if your testimony is dead, even if your breakthrough is dead, even if death has swallowed the best of your life, I bring good news for somebody. <laughs> he said, God is able to give life to those things that are not dead. And call it those things that are not. Right now, it doesn't look as if you will have money. Right now, it looks as if you will not make it. But God says, I have called it. It will happen. So it will happen in Jesus' name. A home is where we belong to. And that is why if somebody is sick in Lagos and is beginning to look somehow, what would they tell him? If that person doesn't have Jesus, they say, take him home. home. You have people that are abroad and maybe they are paid, they have children that are well to do. After some time when they know that the, the elderly is about to die, what would they say? They turn this person home. No. Hmm? Hmm. We are talking of our heavenly home. And that's why that song, the refrain of that song says, Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Get to see This, if, this morning this world is not our own the world we live in does not belong to us I think I gave this testimony there was a time pastor traveled and in the plane and there was high turbulence and I told us before we entered that plane it was now 
Many people own boys, as they will call themselves, or yuppie boys, or swagger boys. Mention all their names. We enter the place together in Germany. So there was a particular guy. His necklace will touch, will almost touch the ground. As we enter back, I said to the plane. I will just say, say my silent prayer. Started dozing in between reading, dozing. After some time, the pilot announced, "This is going to be a turbulent flight. We shall no more be serving food or drinks. All hostess, please stay. Nobody should stand up. If you are sleeping, wake up. Fasten your seatbelt." Before that time, it was a rowdy session. But immediately the pilot announced that, and the place started shaking. There was silence everywhere. No more shaking. I now peep by my side. I looked the guy that came in. That his, his necklace was almost touching the ground. You know what he did? Guess what? That was the time I started sleeping away. And as I was sleeping, my mind was going, I said, Ah! God! Now some person go die. Well, no problem. If I die, I know I'm going home. The only thing I will miss, I will miss my wife. I will miss my children. And of course, I will miss you. But down within myself, I said, Peter, I know I'm going to heaven. They stopped serving food. And it was a six hour flight. Everybody silence, no talking. The people that were existing before. Because I know I am going home. But guess what? I didn't even die. That's why you are saying me. And I can't die cheaply anyway. I didn't say you should praise God with me. But if you don't praise God with me, I know I'm alive. Our heavenly home. This world is not our own. You will see some people, the way they will carry this world. Ah, my children, my money. How many rich men did you know that when they die, they bury them with two cars? You don't, you don't read news, though. They bury them with two. Have you seen one rich man? They bury them with two cars. Uh, let's look at those who read news very well. How many rich men have you know when they were dying, they demolished one house. They now took the house. Back is that coffee. You say, yeah, what are you Have you seen this? Oh, I want to be, people who are reading the news. You are not reading news yet. You are not seeing. Let's ask our mothers that are older than us. They may have seen such before. Have they happened before? This world is not our own. Enough of story. Let's read the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Oh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out of the place where he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. He went out knowing whither he went. We have an example in our father Abraham. When God called him out, just as God has called me out, and I know that I don't belong to this world, just as God has called you to let us know we do not belong to this world. God called Abraham. I have not been to heaven before. I don't know how heaven looks like. But I can tell you, I am going to heaven. In fact, my wife has even changed that word. Anytime I say I'm going to heaven, I say, Nala, I'm going with you. Dread, don't ever say I'm going to heaven as if you are the only one going. We are many that are going. At least I will follow you there. Our heavenly home. When God called our father Abraham for our inheritance, our inheritance is not in this heart. Our inheritance is in the heaven. When God called him, he didn't know where he was going. But he decided to. When we walk with the Lord, in the light of his he didn't know where he was going. He just did what? Trust and obey. That's all he did. Today is not a day of singing. It's a day of thanksgiving. But we must encourage ourselves in the Lord. Are you not sleeping? Master Sin. Verse 13. These all died in the faith. Abel received the promises, but not Abel received it, but Abel seen them afar off and were persuaded all of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So people say, Awalalaye, the world belongs to us. 
Obey has finished it in the song. Those that said it yesterday, where are they? The word is still here. They have gone. Just this last week, I was sharing the testimony. With, I was encouraging the workers earlier on this morning to pray. Just this last week, precisely on Sunday, there was somebody that went to church. In fact, it was a redeemed church. On Monday morning, she died. As at Monday 6 o'clock, uh, Monday 6 o'clock in the morning, she was alive. 12 o'clock, she was alive. I was coming home from work when they called me and said, so, 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 I, call, I passed away. That should be around 6 o'clock. By Tuesday morning, we had brought caskets. Before three, by 4 o'clock, we were burying her. So what are you saying that we own this world? Our heavenly home is what we are talking about. We are pilgrims and strangers in this world. If you know you are a pilgrim in this world, you will not hold anything personal. Many of us are wearing happy faces. Lose 1,000 naira, you will see the hunger of some people. Ah! 1,000 naira, who took it? become somebody else. You say, I do not 1,000 naira. That's even simple. Let us insult some people, you insult me. Do you know who I am? Who are you, by the way? You will die also. Everybody will die, or the rapture will happen. Our heavenly home. I don't take nonsense, so uh, you better start taking nonsense because this place is not our home. Let me give you an example. For those who are married, they are the people that can answer this question. If a bus conductor slaps you, either by mistake or intentionally, you may get angry. After one week, you will forget. If your husband or your wife slaps you, will you forget for life? Why? There is a connection. When you say you are a stranger, it means you don't care what is happening around. It is where you are going that matters to you. If you are a child of God, we what you matter to you is where you are going. Where you are going is what? Heaven. God has promised us in this world that we get the best. And I'm really praying for that person that is saying amen like myself. The best. The Bible said he became poor. It is not a crime to say you are rich. Many Christians are over spiritualized. It is not a crime. The Bible says for your sakes. That's what the Bible says. He became poor so that I may become rich. But do you know, the same Bible says, <laughs> if you are rich in this world and you lose evil, pa, 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 zero. Our heavenly home. If you are still with me, verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country where they came from, the reason why many people are not ready to go home, they are mindful from where they came from. I am the son of so so so. I am from so so so. Who told you where you are going is what matters? The whole Christians, the pilgrims that the Bible is talking of, they did not think of where they were coming from. They thought of where they were going to. Do you know why Lot's Lot wife looked back? She remembered the cares of this world. She remembered, ah, I didn't collect that ajar from mommy Belumi. If I have collected that, I, I, I'm going to lose this thing. Many people are Christians, but they are still reminiscing of the things they did in the world. Those days when I used to chase women. Hey, ah, but now, sir, we thank God. We thank God. In his mind, he has committed enough adultery. You can deceive anybody, you cannot deceive God. Hebrews chapter 11, let's read verse 16. But they desire a better country <laughs> that is an heavenly, where God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared for them a city. One thing you should know about the heavenly home is a place for prepared people. Heaven is a place for prepared people. There will be no gate crashing. You know that some party you go to, they will say strictly by invitation. If you don't carry IV, you will not enter. Heaven is like that, so. Heaven is strictly by ID card. The passport is, are you saved? Are you born again? At the time you die, were you still born again? Many will be born again. And I was sharing with some people this morning. I know some people, myself and my wife was encouraging some people. We told that person, we made you serving God. We made you serving God. This thing you are doing now, we will not join you with it. We will continue with God. Our heavenly home. Oh, I want to see 
look upon his face Yes, to sing forever of his saving grace On the streets of glory, let me lick my voice Oh, my blood Are you still with me? Hebrews chapter 11 why are we going home? Why are we going home? We are going home because the world will go away. This world will pass away. Oh, this is not a message you prepared for when you are coming to church. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. One more time. Jesus is coming soon. Even because I am saying Jesus is coming soon, your mind is doing a a a pa 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 pa. That means something is lying at your door. Repent. He immediately you mentioned Jesus is coming soon. So I said, let him not come now. Let him not come now. It's because there is something fishy. On a good day, when you hear Jesus is coming soon, you should just lift up your voice. Say, ah, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know. That's what you should be singing. One reason why we are going home is because the world will pass away. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 12. He says everything in this world will pass away with fervent heat. Everything you are seeing now will pass away with fervent heat. This world will go away. Another part of the scripture says the fashion of this world passes away. Pastor is not that old, but I'm not that young. I know that there were some fashion, some clothes that were fashionable when I was growing up. When I grew up to some time, they became old school. Guess what? Those clothes are now becoming fashionable again. Those clothes are becoming fashionable again. That's how the world is. The world is just coming like this. Let me encourage somebody. There is no hope in this world. That is why you should know that we are going home. This is a place you should open your Bible yourself. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 as you round up. There's so, there are so many scriptures I would have loved to share with us. But this is not a word you rush. It's something you decode in your spirit. You carry home. You carry like a banner on your forehead. When somebody sees you on your road, say, what's happening? Say, Jesus is coming soon. When people ask, why are you happy? Say, Jesus is coming soon. I have observed the reason why people are happy in the church today is only because somebody has said a powerful testimony. It was not like that in the early Christian days. What made them happy was because they were going home. They were so bold, they were telling people, we are going home. We are out of this world. You know, I remember when we were in school. <laughs> the last semester in school, or the, the last week you spent before going on vacation, students are always happy. They will say, ah, ah. If anything happens after this week, I'm going home. That is how you should be as a child of God. The only reason you will see some Christians smile is when they say, you are bought Jeep. Somebody got visa. That's the kind of testimony that interests us. When last day here, I gave my life to Christ and you begin to be happy. Ask some people, all the plans they've done from January up to now, God is not there. The only reason God is there is say, God, if you don't give me a husband before September, I will deal with you. Prayer point number two. I am tired of this kekemaru I'm hiding. I want to write bears. Prayer number three. I have three children already. Lord, add one more. Prayer number four. All my enemies fall on. No one to say we are going home. What if God answers all your prayers in this world? And you still lose them. Have you forgotten the scriptures? The Bible said, Many will say, They will call me, Lord, Lord. Jesus said, Some will say, We have even prophesied in your name. Let me tell you, speaking in tongues doesn't move God. The sign of sonship is not speaking in tongues. Many Christians, when they can speak in tongues, they go, Baba, say, hey. They just say, Yes, yeah, super Christian. We have come. We have arrived. When they just lay, do two, one or two miracles, they say, That is all. That's not what excites me. What excites me is how many we get to heaven. Benefits of the heavenly home. Those who are heavenly focused, they don't lose any good thing on this world. They get the best in this world. You know why? 
God is comfortable to release the riches of this world to them because he knows that they are heavenly minded. Let me show you one verse of the scripture that many people will not want to read themselves. But in case you don't want to read it, I will read it and I will raise my voice while reading it. Because we are going to First Corinthians chapter 15. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. I like the Yoruba translation. Awala Satu Shijulo. If it is only in this world you are thinking that we have hope, ah, shame on you. We are going home. Let's round up. <laughs> I'm taking too much time. Revelation chapter 21. I journey through the land, singing as I go. Pointing souls to Calvary, to the Prince of Love. Revelation 21. Arrows pierce my soul from without within. But my Lord. Through him I must win. When we started with Hebrews chapter 11 verse 10, he said they are looking for a city which has foundation. Where is that city? Revelation 21 answered it all. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I don't saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Coming down, can you see the heavenly home that we are going to? How many of you are going to heavenly? Can you say amen? Yeah. Uh-huh. I know that that amen will not be much. I'm praying for somebody. You will buy a G before the end of this week. See the amen. If the amen says it's dry, amen. To say to go to heaven now, amen. Eh? Drop down. This is the new Jerusalem. This is the heavenly place. This is where we are going. This is how the heavenly place looks like. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them. Even be their God. Verse 4. This is why I must go to heaven. This is why we must not miss heaven. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And they that sat upon the throne said, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things anew. And he said unto him, Write, these words are true and faithful. In other words, this thing will happen. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a test of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh. This is the one that is making me happy already. This is why we are going home. He that overcometh shall inherit two things. Is that what the Bible say? What did he say? Ah, if there is somebody that is doing yanga for me, I will pray and ask God to answer me and give me what He's giving, what He has given Him. But if God doesn't give me at now, I know a time is coming. He says He will give me all things, gold, silver, the things I'm looking for now. I will get it freely, and I will be His God, and it shall be my soul. Let me just read verse 8 so that I will start praying. This is the one that you don't like to read, but I will read it. Because you must balance the scriptures. But, anytime you see but, it means different. These are the people that will not enter into this place. If pastor is doing this thing secretly, I will not enter. See, are you with me? For the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the warmongers, Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. You are in case you say you are in Madugiri. You are in case you say I'm Matota. And all liars, including pastors that lies. Where will they go? They will not go there. Shall have their own path. Shall have their own path. Where? In the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the same.
second day. Let's stop there for now. But if you read that Revelation chapter where, where we started 21 verse 1, there was a loud voice saying, Hallelujah. Salvation to our God, seated on the truth, and to the Lamb forever. Bottom line, are you going to the heavenly home? Rise up to your feet. It's time to thank God.